In this video, we're going to be learning about powers and exponents. This video will be helpful to students that want to learn about math and also do research on programming as well. We will first go over all the math basics we need to learn this topic. Then at the end of this video, we're going to be enhancing our knowledge with programming inside of Python. So throughout this video, we're going to be covering the following topics. We're first going to be going over what an exponent, a base, and a power is. Second, we're going to be going over what expanded notation or repeated multiplication is. Third, we're going to be going over powers with negative bases and positive bases. Fourth, we're going to be going over negative exponents. Fifth, we're going to be talking about exponents of zero. Sixth, we're going to be going over rules for powers and exponents. And finally, seventh, we're going to be going over our Python code. So let's get started with what an exponent is. So an exponent is an easy way to deal with large numbers. An exponent involves two numbers. It involves first a base, for example b, and the exponent, which is n. For example, 3 to the power of 7. 3 is the base, and 7 is the exponent. And an easy way to remember exponents is by the example of a cocktail umbrella and a drink. You can basically say that the drink inside of the glass is the base, and the exponent is the little cocktail umbrella on the top. So now that we know a little bit of what an exponent is, let's go over what a base is. So we already talked a little bit about what a base is, but basically the base is the bottom number under the exponent. And this is what gets multiplied over and over. For example, if we had 5 to the power of 8, 5 would be the base, and we're just going to keep on multiplying 5 over and over until we do it 5 times. So we know that a base is the number that's under the exponent, and we know that the exponent is the number over the base. But now, what is a power? A power is the combination of both the base and the exponent. For example, if 4 was our base and 5 was our exponent, then we would read it as 4 to the power of 5. Another example could be 6 to the power of 9. So in this one, 6 would be the base, 9 would be the exponent, and the power would basically be 6 to the power of 9. So that's how we say it. So usually this is a very common mistake that many, many people like encounter. And basically, many people think of exponents as powers, but exponents and powers are not the same things. We read powers as 3 to the power of 2 or 3 raised to the power of 2. And an exponent is just that number above the base. So that, those are two different things, and a lot of people do get confused on this topic here. So just be careful when you're using exponents and powers. So now we're going to be going over expanded notation, or also known as repeated multiplication. So exponents are basically repeated multiplication. If, For example, if we have 3 to the power of 2, then all we have to do is just multiply 3 two times. Same thing if we had 6 to the power of 10, we just multiply 6 10 times. So it'll be 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6, all the way until 10 times you do it. So just in conclusion, exponents are basically just repeated multiplication. So now we're going to be going over powers with positive and negative bases. So powers with positive bases are basically just what it sounds like. You have a positive base to a, a positive exponent as well. So for example, 2 to the power of 5. All you have to do to solve this is just do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And our answer would be 32. So with powers with negative bases, you're basically going to have a number inside of a bracket with an exponent outside of the bracket. So for example, negative 2 to the power of 3. And for that, what we do is we do negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is equal to negative 8. And also for this, sometimes you do need to remember your rules for uh, multiplying negative numbers. But since that's very basic stuff, we can leave that for today. So now we're going to be going over what a negative exponent is. So I'm going to bring up an example here. And in this example, I'm also going to be showing you guys three rules with powers and exponents. So not only are we going to be solving a single problem, we're also going to be looking at some rules as well. So let's take the problem of this. So 3 to the power of negative 4 times 3 to the power of 4 divided by 3 to the power of 4. Since we already know this, we can just put uh, divide by 1 underneath. So basically our equation will look like this now. So we have 3 to the power of negative 4 times 3 to the power of 4 divided by 3 to the power of 4. So here we're going to be using our first law, which is called the product law. And this product law is with multiplying powers with the same base. So if the number is the same base, then all you have to do is add the exponents on the top. So for example, since here we have 3 to the power of negative 4 times 3 to the power of 4, these two are the same base. 
So all we have to do is keep the same base and just add the two exponents of the top. So then it will look like this. 3 to the power of negative 4 plus 4 and then divided by 3 to the power of 4. So that is our first law which is called the product law. So now since we have 3 to the power of negative 4 plus 4, all we have to do is negative 4 plus 4 that equals to 0. So now basically we have 3 to the power of 0 divided by 3 to the power of 4. So now here comes our law number 2. So our law number 2 states that any number to the power of 0 is always equal to 1, except for 0. And we're going to be talking more about that later on. So in this case, we have 3 to the power of 0 divided by 3 to the power of 4. So basically now we're going to have 1 divided by 3 to the power of 4. And that is our answer to this, to this problem here. And what I wanted to connect this with is with the uh, uh, law number 3. So th another law that we have is called the inverse law. Basically, the inverse law states that any number that has a negative exponent is equal to 1 divided by the same number except without the negative exponent. It's just a normal exponent. So for example, if we have 1 to the power of negative 3, it's 1 divided by 1 to the power of 3. So in this case, if we look at our example, we first had 3 to the power of negative 4, and we ended up getting 1 over 3 to the power of 4. So if we have the negative, it basically just turns into a positive with a 1 on top of it. So we know that rule number 2 states that anything to the power of 0 is 1. So why is this? And we know this because of this formula here. So if we have a to the power of m, for example, divided by a to the power of n. So that is also equal to a to the power of m minus n. So now what if we say that m is equal to n? So basically on our left side, we can just do a to the power of n divided by a to the power of n, and we can just cross those both sides out, which is then equal to a to the power of n minus n. And since we know that it's going to be 0, a to the power of 0, we can just write it as 1, which is also known as a to the power of 0 equals to 1. So this is why anything raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. But there's one exception to this, and that is 0 to the power of 0. And this is because 0 to the power of 0 is undefined. That means even if you do 0 to the power of 0, you're never going to get 1. It's just like if you're dividing a number by 0. If you divide a number by 0, you're never going to get it. It's undefined. So this is just one exception to the rule number 2. So now we're going to be going over law number 4, which is power raised to another power. So for example, if we have in brackets x to the power of m, bracket close, also to the power of n. So basically here, we can also write this as x to the power of m multiplied by n. So let's substitute some values here. So instead of x, let's just write 3. And then inside of the first bracket, let's say the power is 2. The exponent outside of the bracket is 3. We have 3 to the power of 2 to the power of 3. This is equal to 3 to the power of 6 because we know that we just have to multiply the two exponents. And now to solve this, all we have to do is do 3 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 2. Or we could also do it as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 and times 3, which is 6 times since we have 3 to the power of 6. So this is just not rule number 4. You just have to multiply the two uh, exponents if you have them outside of brackets. Now we're going to be going over dividing expressions with the same base. And this is going to be law number 5. So for example, if we had... So let's say we have 5 to the power of 3 divided by 5 to the power of 2. So since they're the same base, all we have to do is write equals to 5 to the power of 3 minus 2. So all we need to do is just subtract the exponents. So that's just a simple law, which is law number 5, for dividing the same base. So now we're going to be going over our final law, which is different base, but the same power law. So we're basically just doing, if there's different bases, and they have the same power, so how are we going to do this? So for example, if we have in brackets x and y, and then we're going to close the bracket and we have the exponent of m. So to do this, we're just going to use the distributive property and distribute that exponent to both x and y. So then it would basically just look like x to the power of m and y to the power of m. So if we substitute values in, we'd basically just have, for example, inside of the first bracket, we just have 3 times 4, and then we're going to close the brackets, then we're going to do to the power of 4. So then we can just rewrite that as 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 4 to the power of 4. And that way we can solve our equation by that. 
And it's the same thing with the division equation as well. So if we have in brackets x divided by y and outside of the bracket we have to the power of n, all we have to do is distribute that n to both the x and the y. So for example, if we had in brackets 6 divided by 2 and outside the exponent was to the power of 3, so then it would just be doing uh, 6 to the power of 3 divided by 2 to the power of 3. And that way you can also solve it from there. So that is our sixth law for the different base and same power. And so that's everything for the basics of learning uh, powers and exponents. And now we're going to be moving on to our Python code. So I have two programs saved for us today. The first one, we're going to be going over how to power a number in Python. And second, we're going to be going over how to plot powers in Python matplotlib. So this code here is how to power a number inside of Python. So it's very simple code here. All we're going to be do I'm just going to be explaining it here and you can copy it off if you want to. So first we're just going to be writing base is equal to the int of the input. We're making a user enter a number for the base. So basically the user is going to be entering a number for the base and we're going to be saving that in this variable called base. Second, we're going to be creating another variable called exponent and we're going to be making the user enter a number for the exponent. And we're going to be saving these as integers so these can work here. And then after that, since we know that a power is the base and exponent, base double times exponent. So double stars in Python means to power it. So if we just have one single star, that's just multiplication. And if we have double star, then that means ex uh, powering. And then we're going to just be printing our power. So when we run this, menu here will pop up for us. And all we're going to have to do is enter a number for our base. So let's just say we have the number 2 and we have exponent as 5. So then we get the answer as 32. So you can do basically any number. So 8 to the power of 0, that gives us 1. And you can experiment with this as much as you want. So that is our first code for our Python today. So here I have our second uh, code here. And this is for plotting exponents inside of a graph. And the way we're going to be doing this is by using matplotlib and numpy. So up here, as we can see, we have two uh, importing libraries. And one of them is matplotlib, and one of them is numpy. So you are going to need these libraries to do this type of code. So if you don't have them, uh, search up how to install these inside of your special editor, text editor, and then you should be able to do this program here. So first, we're going to be just creating our x and y coordinates for our graph. So we can just leave this uh, as this. It's going to just help us for our aligning. And then here for y is equal to what? And we're just going to be writing x and then to the power of 3. So that's just basically what we're going to be doing here to plot our actual uh, line there. And then here, this is going to help us to style our, uh, that should not say grid, that should say grid. So this is going to help us to style our grid here. And we're just going to be writing these, you can copy these down. It just adds like a few boxes as well to our grid, which makes it look better. And then down here, we're just going to be plotting and showing our grid. So we're just going to do plt.plot and then x comma y and then showing our grid here. So this should be it for our code. And maybe this time let's run as two instead of three. And let's run this to see how this will work. So if we just run this from here, we might have to wait a few seconds for it to open up. And there it is. So it opened up here and we can see our plot here. So we have our x axis to negative two to the two. And then here we're just gonna be plotting x to the power of two. So this is how x to the power of 2 looks like on a graph. So now let's change this to x to the power of 3. So if we run this now, we're going to see a difference of a line. It should, yeah, it should look like this type of a line. So this is how x to the power of 3 looks like. And yeah, so this is basically just a really neat code to help us to just see the plots of powers inside of Python. And that's basically it for our Python code and for this video as well. So if you guys ended up enjoying this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe because it does take some time to make these videos. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.